And good morning, everybody. Um, so I work for Auckland Libraries, and I'm based at the Research Centre, which is in the Central Library. Auckland Libraries has four research centres, North, South, West, and Central, where I'm based. So we effectively cover the, the Auckland Isthmus area, the old um, Auckland City Council before amalgamation. I mean, more than that as well, and, and we've got a, a wider focus, but essentially that's our, our area. And we deal with um, research inquiries, um, we deal with local history, family history is also a big part of what we do as well. So in terms of researching your house, I think the easiest way to put it for the libraries is that you might not find anything specific about your house, you could, but what we can help you with is to build up a picture in the way that you build up a family history around your family of your place and where you live. And uh, there are basically two ways of doing it. You can look at print resources, um, you know, hard copies of material, or our digital collections, and I'll talk about both. So in terms of what we have in, in print, one of the um, best ways to start is actually just to consult a book. Just look on the library catalogue and see what's there regarding your area, because of course many of you will probably have read the local histories of, of books in the Albert Eden area, such as you know Dick Scott's old Mount Albert, and you know there was the recent um, book on the history of um, Mount Eden that came out last year. Um, photographs, of course, most of these are digitised, which I'll, I'll get onto. Magazines and journals, you know, historical journals, um, if they're indexed, you can find an amazing wealth of information. Um, official publications, the gazettes, and so on. Maps and many of these are online as well. Things like electoral rolls and directories, which I'll get on, onto, and of course newspapers, because we have the complete collection, for example, of the New Zealand Herald. Um, even the New Zealand Herald does not keep every copy, and we have them, the Auckland Star, and also some community newspapers, which I'll get onto as well. So in terms of books, what you'd be looking for are things like your local histories, um, heritage studies, Books on architecture and building as well, just to give you a, a better and more complete picture of what your house is like. And for example, this is just a, a selection on New Zealand houses, you know, books that examine the villa in more detail. If you're in a state house, there are, or a former state house, <laughs> there are a lot of books written about that. Um, and also books that go into the plans and, and the development and, you know, so many types of state, house, state houses. Directories and electoral roles, I mean, this is going to build up a picture of who lived in your place before you, um, before you, you moved it, when you're building up that, that history of, of your house. Electoral roles, as you know, you have to <laughs> search by name. Um, there is an alternative called a habitation index. We don't have them, um, which are the streets, you know, there's a habitation index for each electorate and it lists a street and who's enrolled. Um, we don't have them. Um, electoral rolls um, we do have. Directories are a much better way to go um, because a lot of the directories up until 1954 actually will list the street. So for example, Ranfurly Road, up the road here, you could look in a directory for Ranfurly Road and see who lived there. It might not be street numbered, of course, it might be a bit of detective work. It will say, for example, um, we'll say Gillies Ave here, it will say, you know, I think it's the drive between the drive and um, whatever that street is there on left hand side and who lives there and maybe what their occupation is. The beauty of the directories is that they are all on Ancestry. Dot com, the website, the digitised up into 1954, I think it is, on Ancestry. And the absolutely good thing about it at this moment is that Ancestry is free to use through the library from home. If you didn't have your own subscription, you could come into Auckland Libraries and research through Ancestry.com. But up until the end of June, you can do it from home. So you just, you, I think you'd still need a library card number and, and a barcode. Um, and if you're not a library member, it's easy enough to pop into the local library and join up. And from home, you would go to our library website, you would go to ancestry.com, and you could search the directories. And they're there from um, 1860s, off the top of my head, but up until 1955. Sorry, is that for the whole of the It is, it is. And actually, some of them for the whole of New Zealand as well. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot easier to look at the print version. I was looking at the, the digital one last night just to check, and it's something, something like 1,200 pages, and you kind of got to work out for New Zealand. You know Auckland's at the beginning, and you kind of got to do a bit of 
playing around, which is quite fun. I will say it's quite a lot of fun, but yeah, it's, it's the whole of Auckland. Suburban newspapers are just fabulous. They're one of my favourite things. Um, now they're a bit, you know, not so great, really, are they, when you get your central leader in the mailbox and it hasn't got a lot of local information. But back in the day, if you think about it, there was just so much good stuff in there. And we have, um, as you can see, we've got the Mount Albert Enterprise, May 56 to October 62, which merged with the Point Chevalier News um, the cent before the central leader, the central suburbs leader, and the Roskill Times, the Manukau Progress, which is a, it's an only hung in Mount Roskill area. Um, there's just so much good information in there, and they're actually a lot of fun just to have a look at and browse through. Some of them are in hard copy and, and they're bound, but some of them, like the Manukau Progress, are on microfilm, so they're a lot easier to access. Um, they're, they're not indexed, it's not like you can look up somewhere necessarily and it will tell you on page 50 of this issue there was an article about what was happening and Ranfurly wrote that week. But they're another resource to add to your list if you're trying to build up this picture and they give you a real sense of what was happening, particularly in the 50s and 60s, because those, you know, times, I mean, you know, a lot of us were around then, and um, it's a trip down memory lane, but also a lot of that material isn't digitised. So they were worth considering, and you would just have to look on the, the library catalogue and, and, and find them that way and where they are. We do have these at the Central Research Centre. Um, I will say you probably know or have heard that with the construction works at the Central Library, things are a bit... Interesting, <laughs> interesting at the moment. Um, the research centre level two has closed, probably until the end of the year, but we have a service operating on the first floor. So everything I'm talking about, it's still okay for you to come in or ring us or email us about. Um, things might take a bit longer to retrieve. Um, some of the material may be going off site. We don't know at this point what's happening. That's just a heads up, but we're still there and, and working as usual. We're just well, sort of as usual, we're just on level, uh, level one, not level two. Um, publications, like, this is my favourite one because it's, it's extolling the virtues of Fibrolite. Um, <laughs> Home and Building, this is, a, this is a, it's a really, really neat magazine and actually off the top of my head I can't tell you what years it operated. I think, I mean, I don't know if Marguerite knows, it was probably 30s, 40s, 50s onwards to the 80s. And why I've included that is because a lot of um, architecturally designed um, and um, properties of well-known people had features written about them in this publication. Um, you know, Mrs. So-and-so and, you know, some are building their new house in Ranfurly Road and who the architecture is, architect is and how the design is. It might even include the plans. Um, how you would find that is we have indexed that, the, this publication, which I'll talk about in a minute as to how you could find that. Um, we do have the hard <laughs> copies in the library, but the New Zealand Elect Electronic Text Centre um, from Victoria University has it digitised. So if you just Google the NZETC or New Zealand Electronic Text Centre um, and home and building, once you get there you could have a, you can have a browse through. Um, it's, it's, it's not indexed, it's not like you could put in a, name, a street name and it would bring up which issues that um, street was, was mentioned. It's more, if you know the exact pay, um, issue or, or anything like that, um, you could do it, but it, it's there and it's just another resource and, as well as these other um, magazines because they, they talk about, you know, the architects, the builders, and you can sort of follow trends and as I said, if your house was owned by somebody um, who I guess wanted to be featured in the magazine, you could find their... Um, that reference. The other thing we have too is the historic Lynn survey plans. Now this is an interesting collection. They're on these, these aperture cards, so called, you know, because of the, the little aperture. They're about this big in, in, in real life. Um, there are literally thousands of them and they came to us from the Depart Department of Lands and Surveys um, some years ago. What they are is they are the uh, deposited plans. <coughs> which many of you may have if you've got your certificate of title on your house anyway. But if you haven't, you can come into the library and, and request to look at your plan. You would have your DP number, I think, on your rates notice, um, and you can also go to the council website to and put in the address to find out what the DP number is. And you could come into us um, 
We wouldn't necessarily be able to do it straight away because these are all located in the basement. And we would go down, as you can see that DP number there, we would go down and find it. Hopefully it would be there and is not misfiled. If it's misfiled, I think it's probably misfiled permanently because there are drawers and thousands of these. And we have microfiche readers and you could look at it on microfiche and, and as you can see, you get the copy up there. Um, the interesting thing about them is sometimes when, when so the land was surveyed um, for boundaries and so on, right, and then the plans for that were deposited and then the certificate of title was issued to the property owner. But what it can sometimes do, and I think particularly in areas like this where you have got quite a good history, is you can sort of look around in the surrounding and sometimes it might tell you another DP number that you can look at so you can sort of go back even further. So it's a bit of detective work and it, it, could, it could amount to nothing but it's just another thing to think about and we're really happy to have this collection used and for people to come in with their DP number and, um, and arrange to have you um, look at it. It covers the years um, up until 1996 from the 1870s up until 1996. Um, the other thing is that they're not, there's no legal standing on these. It's not like you could present this in a in sort of a court case or something and say, here it is. Um, it's, it's not for that at all, but it's just for your information. So getting on now to the digitised collections, and essentially there are um, two main places that you would look at on our, our website. Kuda Heritage Collections which is a, is a database platform um, and heritage images for photos and, um, and maps. And at some point, heritage images will all go over to the new Kura Heritage Collections. Um, that Kura means treasure, you know, sort of valued possession, so it's a really cool name for, for this um, collection. So Kura Heritage Collections, so as I said, it's a... Um, Oh, this is why I've been kept talking about Ranfurly Road, because this house is in Ranfurly Road. I don't know if it's still there. 89, 87, off the top of my head. And the other picture is a view from, from um, you know, looking up Mount Eden Road, up towards Three Kings there. So what um, Kura Heritage Collections is, it's a, it's a mix of a, an index, as well as material that you can find there. So if you think of an index, you know, you turn to the, you know, the index at the back of the book, and it says, you know, Ranfurly Road, page 56, and you go to it. So Kura is like that. You would type in, say, Ranfurly Road, see what it brings up. It'll bring up images. Um, it may bring up articles. And it will tell you that there's an article about this house in Ranfurly Road, and it's in the central leader, you know, 20th of June, 1993. Then you would have to go and find the article. The article is not going to be there on Kura. It's not digitised there. So think of it as a combination of an index that will tell you where to find the material, as well as material that has been digitised. Um, as I said, all the photos from the old heritage images, which are still alive and well, there's so much stuff still on heritage images, is coming over into this new platform. And um, a lot of the old databases from um, pre-amalgamation, from, from for example Waitakere, North Shore, Manukau, have all sort of been merged into this one new database. Um, maps, um, actually that's the one um, Carolyn mentioned, I think the Benfield Estate, I think she had a slide up about that. What I wanted to specifically mention is if you see this and you're searching and you see that, it just means there's no image online. The, the photograph, the map will be in the collection, it'll be in Heritage Collections, it's just not available online. So by all means you would contact Heritage Collections, you know, just sort of go through the website um, find out how to contact them and you could possibly come in and have a look at the photo and they would get it out for you if it's easily accessible. So if you find something and it has that, sort of don't panic about that, it just means it's not digitised. Um, so a terrific selection of maps as well, a terrific selection of aerial photographs um, which are um, just fabulous, particularly for you know, charting the, the changes in your area and around your house. Um, so this is the old heritage images, um, just a couple of photos, and like I said, these will be um, taken over to, to Kura. Um, this is um, Mount Eden Road, uh, I think it's 1950s with um, Three Kings, and this was a house in, in Point Chevalier. 
So just remember to look at both. But when you go to Kura, if you're searching, it will, it will often find that it will say, you know, look here for photos or go to, and it will list another place that hasn't transferred over yet for you to go to. I want to um, just mention a couple of the indexes. Um, some of you who have been maybe searching on the library will know Index Auckland, um, which was our sort of people, places and events index. A lot of the material was taken from the suburban newspapers, the central leader and so on. Um, that is all merged now into Kura. I hope I'm not confusing anybody with this, but, but just think Kura. Um, the Bush Index is another one which is on Kura. So um, that was the um, name for Graham Bush, who when he was researching the Auckland city history back in the 1970s, I think, it's actual index cards, you know, the old-fashioned index cards. And we still have them tucked away somewhere. And that they were um, created to have, have this online, um, the Bush Index online, so you could, you could search it. It's really good, if you think of council and what council does, and you're talking roading and you know, just all those council facilities, um, you know, building, street, just everything that the city council does, that's the sort of information you might find. Again, it's an index, so he might have a slide about something that was happening in a particular street at a time. Sorry, an index card, and it will tell you it's in the New Zealand Herald or it's in the Auckland City Council Minute Books and, and Council Archives, so index. The New Zealand Card Index is one of my absolute favourites and it has not gone over to Kura. Um, and it was um, material that was indexed by librarians up until 1996. And it's an absolute treasure trove of information. Some of that um, material in the suburban newspapers is in there. Librarians back in the day had um, scrapbooks. We have a lot of scrapbooks. Um, they're really, really old and um, um, fragile but they are on microfilm or microfiche. And there's just so much really fascinating stuff in there. You can get carried away. If you like research, you can totally get carried away with this stuff. But the New Zealand Card Index, you would just you go to it on our library website, go to the A to Z on the online resources, find in for New Zealand Card Index, and it will take you to it, and you just type in what you want and see what it will bring up. The Auckland Street Names Guide is also on the li Auckland Library's website. Um, and that's just, it's, it's a very brief database. It will just tell you, you know, maybe your street may have changed names at some point and what it was before and this kind of thing. It's sort of building up that picture once again. Um, oh, that's just an example of what it looks like from the website. Um, yeah. If you go to the Heritage tab on the top right as well, that's where you'll for example, have links to local history and so on, just up here on the Auckland City Street Name Sky, just another resource. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with Kuta Heritage Collections um, is that it's being added to all the time, and one of the items we got digitised and put up there a year or two back was a book called Point Chevalier Memories, so if, you've, if Point Chevalier is your area. This is a, a fabulous resource. And what it is is a project that the Point Chevalier Library did about 10 years ago. And they asked people who were over the age of 55 and who had grown up in Point Chevalier in the 30s, 40s and 50s if they would like to share their memories of growing up in Point Chev. And so they did. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly comprehensive book, but it has been digitised on Kura. And why I'm mentioning this is if you are trying to build up that picture of your house and, 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 and the suburb, you can actually search it. For example, if you were researching a house in, say, Target Road, Point Chevalier, you could put in, once you get to Kura and get to the um, Point Chevalier, mem Chevalier Memories, you could put in Target, Target Road, Target Street, and it will bring up where that's mentioned, and you can follow through this history. It's an amazing story with people who are, you know, were living there in those years and, and how the area was developing and what it was like and the local places and all the things they did. Once again, I do stress the New Zealand Card Index because you won't, you do have to search for it, you won't find it on Kura. At some point it will go through, but at the moment it's still a, its little it's own little beast on the website and it covers the 1950s to 1996. I mean, it could be that there is a house, that, that your house is mentioned there, that the property's mentioned, that you, know, you just never know what's there. And I think that's the beauty of 
of the researching and like we always talk about going down the rabbit hole, sometimes you can get carried away and go maybe in a different direction and then you can bring yourself back to what you're searching for. It could be you don't find anything, to be honest. I mean, you know, probably the chances of you finding your house being mentioned in a newspaper or so on, it might be quite slim, but it's quite neat in the way that family history builds up that bigger picture of your family. I think it's nice to build up that picture of your area and, and how it was. And of course the catalogue, don't forget the good old fashioned catalogue for looking up books and magazines as well. And finally too, yeah, just to remind you um, about Ancestry.com, which is free through the library's website, so you don't need to pay for a subscription. It's free until the end of June and you can access it from home and um, access, I think, probably for searching your house, it'll be, it'll be the directories and just sort of tracing back to see what the area was like, what the streets were, what the shops were. It's a fascinating, you know, sort of local history exercise to do that. And...